Our next speaker is talking about building with nature. All right, Kelly Hart. I am going to speak about building with nature, and I'll get to my little PowerPoint presentation that I'll sort of explain as it goes along uh, fairly quickly, but I, I wanted to sort of flow along with the uh, way this, this whole Bonfire Heights uh, has been flowing with some, some biographical uh, information about where I come from and, and how I've come to be involved in, uh, in, in sustainable architecture and natural building. I uh, was a nerd as a child uh, in high school and in junior high, but in the 50s, that word wasn't around, and so they called me a brain. And I, I was living in, in, on, on the West Coast, and, and my wife, who, who uh, grew up on the East Coast, said that the same term was used in, in her school, and she was also known as a brain. And it was meant to be derogatory, but I didn't take it that way. I always thought it was a, a, a real compliment, you know, that, yeah, they recognized that, that I had some, some mental ca capabilities, and I was able to <laughs> use it. So, uh, also, interestingly, following up on, on the previous uh, couple, I grew up in uh, Mormon country. I, I was born in Idaho, and... Um, then moved to Utah outside of Salt Lake City. So I grew up in a uh, intensely Mormon community. Uh, but my parents, who had grown up as Mormons themselves, had left the church. So I was brought up as kind of outside the church, which meant that I was also outside of the local society. And uh, while that was difficult for me socially, I think that as I look back, I really gained a lot of character from that situation because I, I was forced to rely on myself and my own resources uh, a, a great deal. And I became uh, quite uh, good at, at teaching myself all kinds of things. My father was uh, a good uh, craftsman and I learned to, to do things, to build things to use my hands, and, and my mother about the same with sewing and whatnot. So I, and I grew up with three sisters. So I, I grew up learning how to cook and, and learning how to, to fix my clothes. And, and all of these skills um, have served me well in, in, in my life. I, I would say that I've been a, a true entrepreneur from, from the get-go. And uh, I've, I've had many, many different kinds of, of jobs over the years, but almost all of them have been generated um, for myself and by myself. I've been self-employed and, um, and have never failed to have food on the table. So I've, I've worked as a, a freelance photographer. I've worked as a, um, a, a filmmaker. I've worked as a, an animator. I, I've actually patented a process for making animated movies and, and, uh, and I promoted that for some time. I, I worked as a carpenter. I, I uh, did a lot of remodeling on, on buildings and, and, uh, and I have used all of these skills in, in uh, furthering my career and, and, and doing what I, I really want to do. And, and that's always been the, the motivation for me, is to, to follow my bliss and, and, and really just go for it for, you know, whatever it is that I wanted to accomplish, that was what I would do. And, and I think that the background of, of relying on myself and, and having um, developed skills has enabled me to, to, to do that because I can live very inexpensively and I can um, do things that a lot of people think, oh, you can't you know, do that. Well, I, I, I learned early on that how to, to teach myself things. You know, if I didn't know how to do something, I, I, I knew how to find out. So I taught myself how to, to make films, how to, to, to do animation, 
how to to eventually um, make websites, and that's what I'm doing now. Is I I'm a webmaster and have been for um, over a decade, and that's how uh, we're making our living now is is through our, our web activity. And th th my primary realm of of interest is in sustainable architecture and natural building, so that's what I'm going to talk about now. Building with nature. And I'm going to have to stand over here to, to move this. Uh, there's the, the introduction just goes through some images that relate to nature. And this is what it's all about, ultimately. We are all elements of, of nature and biology, and um, we, we need to recognize that. These are the mountains behind uh, the, uh, the house that, that I'll be showing you that I built in, in Colorado. So there's, there, there's a, a, a lot of, of talk about natural building these days, and I'm I'm sort of inverting that so that um, now I'm going to be talking about building with nature uh, and using nature as a guide for making choices uh, in, in, in how we live. Uh, question, how, how do other animals provide their shelter? Maybe we can learn something from animals. Uh, so one obvious thing is that animals always use local materials. You know, they don't have a choice. They're, <laughs> they're going to use local materials. Well, th that's one of the, the uh, tenets of, of good sustainable architecture is you choose materials that are in your locality so you don't have to haul them from across the, the world or, or uh, somewhere else. Uh, so here's an example of, of a, a, uh, a structure that was built with local materials in, in Mexico. And uh, another example of local materials. Uh, there, there are many indigenous cultures around the world where they also don't have any choice but to build with what happens to be in their backyard. And, and you can build incredible, beautiful, wonderful, comfortable structures um, using just the materials that, that might be in your backyard. And, and it would be ecologically uh, a, a preferable thing to do. So here we have wasps uh, making paper uh, to, to build things. And, and here's somebody who's, who's actually uh, using the local clay to paint the wall uh, of his house. Totally natural. Um, a, a, another uh, possibility is, is found habitat, where you can do like our ancestors did. Uh, if you find a cave or you find something that, that can suit you as a, uh, a habitat, then why not use it? Also, an, a, another uh, possibility is, is recycling materials. And there's a slide coming up that, that shows a, a hermit crab um, using a shell that, um, you know, not his shell, but he uses that shell as, as a, uh, a way to, to provide some protection around his body. Well, you can, you can use all kinds of things um, to help you create a habitat. And my wife and I have done that with lots of different things like vehicles. Uh, we lived in two different buses that, that I've outfitted very comfortably, you know, with everything you need. And it's, it's reusing, it's recycling uh, some, some items that, that might just be in, in, in the environment. And, and that's a, another really appropriate way to, to, uh, to find habitat. Uh, another uh, approach to, to, to this is, is to, to, to live um, in, in, in small uh, places, if, if you 
if you provide only what you need and instead of, of have this, this idea that, that you really have to have some kind of a, a, a mansion up on the hill or um, you know more space, then you're way better off because then you don't have as much material that, that's required to, to put this, this house together. You, you don't have to provide as much heat to, uh, to make it uh, comfortable. And so you're using less energy. And uh, a lot of, of what uh, natural building, sustainable architecture is about is um, related to the use of energy. Um, and I'm sure you know, you're all aware of, of the, the uh, deleterious effects of, of energy production and our environment you know, leading to global warming and all of this. Um, it's something that we as humans really need to get a, a handle on in order to, um, to make a sustainable future. So if we can find ways to heat our homes, for instance, without using fossil fuel, um, then we're going to be uh, much better off uh, in, in as, as time goes on. And there are, are some really simple ways to do that. Uh, passive solar uh, building is, is something that is um, demonstrated and, and proven to, to be extremely effective. Uh, and all it takes is an arrangement of, of the way the glass and the orientation of the house is and the use of appropriate uh, thermal mass materials on the inside and insulation materials on the outside just simple ways of designing a house and or and or even retrofitting a house to to make it um, comfortable and, and not use very much energy uh, at, at the moment my wife and I are, are living in a, uh, a manufactured home that um, we uh, have um, changed we've modified it by adding certain glass you know windows in some areas and we've uh, put tiles on the floors and did some rock work behind the wood stove and um, and all of these 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 small things have, have made a big difference in um, making that that house more ecological and more comfortable uh, a, a, another uh, aspect of, of building sustainable houses is to uh, these days to minimize the use of wood one example is is to, to to make domes because domes don't really necessarily require the kind of, of wooden structure the the house that, that that I was referring to the earth bag house that we built is uh, has very little um, milled lumber in it uh, there are some found round pieces, parts of, of trees that, um, that, that I, I use to, to help support parts of the house. But um, very little of, of, of that entire house is, is made with wood. Um, it was the, the bags of, the earth bags, I should probably explain, are, are actually just what they sound like. They're... they're um, polypropylene, usually polypropylene bags, the same kind of bags that, that you find um, rice or grains or, or animal feed uh, packed in. Well, you can fill those bags with a lot of different materials, and including just the soil that happens to be on the site, and you can stack those up. You can put barbed wire in between the, uh, the courses of the bags, and you stack them up like you would with bricks so that the the seams overlap, and then you end up with walls, and, and they can be either vertical walls or they can be uh, fashioned into domes. And um, you can also fill them with, with insulation material, and that's what we did with the house that we built. Uh, they're in the area uh, where we lived. It, it was possible to, to, to buy truckloads of, of scoria, which is a, uh, a a volcanic stone, it's very lightweight, um, and because of that, it, it's very insulating and makes a, 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 a wonderful, very thick insulated wall. So we basically built our house with insulation, and then you have to protect the, the bags 
from the sunlight because the ultraviolet will eventually deteriorate the, the, uh, the, the polypropylene. And, uh, and what we did was we made papercrete. And papercrete is recycled newspaper, junk mail, all kinds of um, recycled paper products. And, and you can put those in, in, in a big blender kind of machine uh, and we'll throw in a little bit of Portland cement and, and maybe some sand. And the, the contraption that I put together to do this was, was, was called a tow mixer. And I would just tow it behind my car and it would mix up the, uh, the, the paper and, and the cement and everything and create this slurry. Uh, you couldn't read anything in, in, in the paper anymore. It was, it was taken right back down to, to the, the fiber, the paper fiber. Um, and then we'd drain out the, the excess water and you'd end up with a, a, a kind of putty-like material that, that we use to put on the outside and the inside of, of the house. Uh, on the, and then on the inside, I, I covered that with uh, a, a lime plaster, so it, it had a, a nice, natural, and very light-colored um, image uh, that um, was uh, bright and, and, and nice to live in. Um, so, Sustainable architecture is, uh, a ver you know, in involves a variety of strategies to, to that, that, that have to be employed to, to as, as a, a, a comprehensive unit to, to, to make it really function. Uh, and so we have the, the the, the energy that I was talking about, well, you can also uh, generate your, your own energy, and I'm sure many of you, you've seen, uh, you know, the photovoltaic panels that you can put on your house. Uh, you can um, use wind energy, but it, it's, it really is possible with some, some dedication and, and, and cleverness to, to make a, what, what's called a zero energy home, where everything that you need um, can be generated by the home itself. And earthships are an example of, of a, a structure that um, is designed just for that. Um, with earthships, they use um, old tires to, to create the walls. Well, that's just one strategy. You, you, could, you could use earth bags, for instance, to, to make the same structure. Um, and you can also recycle water. You, you can um, actually collect water in, in many environments. Uh, you can collect rainwater and store it and, and then reuse it as, as it's being used and, and help that. And I'm sure that, that Jenny will probably talk about that in her presentation about permaculture that's following mine, um, how you can reuse household water and, and, and uh, grow plants with it, you can have a greenhouse attached to your house, you can have fish tanks, and, and uh, there's so many ways that, that you can live in, in, in a natural fashion and, um, and, and really create everything that, that, that you might need just by organizing the house in the right way. Yeah. Sure. Uh, there's, there's, there's a. So my name is Marisa, and I'm I'm living in San Diego right now, and I live on the Tijuana um, River, and so 75% um, of the river is in Mexico, and 25% is in the United States. We have a lot of problems with tires, and so in two hours we did a service day, and they collected 208 tires out of the Tijuana River on the U.S. side. <laughs> And what they're doing with those tires in Mexico is actually building houses. And so we're trying to make a case for how it's more cost effective if you are using this, you know, potentially hazardous toxic material to um, take it out of the river and then repurpose it. And so I was just curious about some of the costs. Yeah, there's, there's a, uh, what I would consider a, a, a long-standing myth that green building costs more money. Um, and I think that that, that 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 idea has been promoted 
Uh, partly because in some cases it does, you know. I mean, if, if, if you have to hire a, a contractor to build and, uh, it's in, and, and the contractor has, you know, this specialty and it's not the standard construction that can happen very quickly, then doing something on a custom basis, um, which is often required with a, a natural building, it can cost more money. But uh, on the other hand, um, it, it, it easily could cost much less. I mean, for instance, with earth bag building, you, you might be just digging the soil that, that, that happens to be under your feet, putting that in the bags, and you can buy misprinted uh, uh, polypropylene bags for you know, less than 20 cents a piece. And, uh, and, and so the materials cost can be uh, reduced considerably with, with the use of, of many of these natural materials, especially found materials that, that it might be in, in your locality. Uh, and then if you add to that the, the possibility of doing much of the work yourself, um, as I did, uh, you, can, you can easily build a house for considerably less than, uh, than a standard house uh, might cost. So, it, you know, uh, 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 if that's an answer, uh, you know, it depends. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember, uh, you know, the, the flow of, of, of my presentation. Uh, yeah. Would you um, describe a few of the different types of natural building and what it's like to try to get them permitted, like straw bale and cob and mm -hmm. light cloth, like clay straw, and so yeah. go, go through a couple of different examples to sh show what people are doing right now and how they're getting sure. it approved. Um, she, uh, Jenny mentioned a, a number of, of natural building techniques, um, and there are, you know, earthen materials that uh, can be used in earth bags, cob, adobe, straw, uh, or, or um, rammed earth are examples of earthen materials. Uh, then straw bale is, is another common material that's used in, in natural building and um, is, is great because it provides uh, considerable insulation, which is, is very important in, in any kind of a climate that has extremes. Um, another uh, natural building technique that, that I really quite like is, is called uh, cordwood. And basically, you're, you're building a house uh, out of what would be considered firewood, you know, like pieces of, of wood that have been cut to a certain length, usually less than two feet long. And, and then you mortar those into a wall like uh, you would with stone, you know, with, with uh, that mortar uh, surrounding the, uh, the logs. But then you leave a hollow space in between and that uh, is filled with insulation, uh, and, and that uh, creates the, the perfect kind of, of wall arrangement uh, because you have some thermal mass on the inside that's insulated uh, from the exterior, and, um, and that can be done quite cheaply. Uh, the, the, the question of codes uh, is, is one that, that you, you run across, um, you know, anytime you're, you're building in an area that, that has uh, code compliance r uh, regulations. So, uh, you know, I sell uh, house plans on one of my websites um, all around the world. And so it's a question that comes up frequently uh, for me. And, and um, there are some uh, jurisdictions that have already incorporated um, some aspect of natural building um, in, into their codes, but those are, are few and far between. Um, in Colorado, in the, in the county where we built this earth bag house, it was um, uh, fortunate that the county itself had never adopted the, the, uh, a building code. Um, we, we did have to comply to state regulations uh, regarding plumbing and electricity, but there was no building code. Uh, otherwise, you're, you're going to have to um, work with the code, of code officials, and, and it is uh, quite possible to build any kind of a structure if, if you um, can make the case that you are uh, actually 
uh, coming up with, with a you know, technique or a, a method that will comply with the intent of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the code. Um, but it really depends on the individual, the, 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 uh, you know, the code compliance officer or the, the building inspector, what they will allow and won't allow. And um, unfortunately, because of the, the nature of, of bureaucratic um, administration, often uh, the, the uh, inspector is, is, is going to be reluctant to, to go uh, beyond the standard. I've got, I think, five minutes left here, just enough time to hopefully go through these and, and show you the, a couple of images of the, at least the earth bag house that, that, that we built. These are in, uh, termite mounds in Africa, perfect example of, of insects uh, creating their own structure, and, and they're astounding. They, they can heat and cool themselves. This is a papercrete house. Example of recycled buildings. This building is entirely recycled. Um, going underground is another good stru uh, strategy for, for uh, uh, living comfortably and, and one that uh, animals know. These are examples of different uh, natural building techniques. All of those are adobe. This floor is adobe. Here's an example of cob, very structural material, very sculptural material. Cob is used in, in England for uh, decades and, and uh, centuries, actually. And, and, uh, um, this is an example of an earth bag structure. Um, this is the beginnings of, of the house that in, in Colorado, the earth bank house that, that we built and lived in. This is what it looked like. Um, um, th th in general, if, if, if the, this, the building is, is built um, sensibly, uh, they, they withstand um, earthquake seismic activity very well. There have been a number of tests on domes, earth, earth bag domes that, that have proven that. More examples of earth bags and natural stones. These, these are in, in Italy, completely built of stone, even the roofs. And then wood can be used, um, you know, especially if it's uh, sustainably harvested and, and the use of timber framing is, is a, uh, an excellent idea. Here's an exam some examples of cordwood building. Bamboo is another natural material that's excellent for, for, for building if, it, if it's uh, available in your area. Grows very quickly, um, and you can bundle together reeds and make all kinds of wonderful structures. Uh, then I talk about domes and how that's a way to avoid the use of wood. These are all examples of, of domes. And vaults are another example. Here's, this, um, again, the house in, in, in Colorado that we built. And that front entrance is, is a vault. Here's another example of a vault that was built uh, over a uh, pre-manufactured um, uh, steel uh, Quonset-type structure. This entire building uh, that I call the carriage house has two floors and cost me a, a total of $5,000 to build <laughs> using recycled materials and, and the, uh, the steel structure was actually new. These are, are different kinds of materials. Uh, this is autoclaved uh, concrete. 
um, examples of, of using natural round wood to, uh, to build with. Um, design principles, building small. There's a whole movement called tiny houses that you may have heard about that uh, is sweeping over the country. Lots of people are discovering that they can live in, in tiny little spaces that they can you know, basically put on a trailer and haul around. Mm -hmm. And they have everything that, that, that you might need. Um, uh, solar, passive solar architecture example of, of, of that. These are all pictures of, of that earth bag house in Colorado. Uh, we had some uh, photovoltaics. Here's an example of a water catchment system being, being uh, built. Um, attached greenhouses are an excellent way to, to, to both heat the house and to, uh, to create uh, food. And then uh, this is a pantry that was built right into the hillside. Uh, you, can have, you can create a naturally cooled pantry where you can uh, keep lots of food um, that doesn't cost anything to keep it cool. Uh, all you have to do is dig down into the ground about five or six feet in practically any locality, and you'll end up with a cool space that will never freeze and will keep your, your food cool. So why do we live in boxes? Because <laughs> uh, it's easy, you know, and because we've been doing it. But uh, I'm, I'm suggesting that there are good reasons to, uh, to, to think of other, other shapes um, for, for building. Uh, often these give you a feeling of being connected with nature. Um, they're often much stronger. So um, I'm suggesting that, that we all think outside the box and use nature as our guide. <laughs>